everyone. Hello. My name is Melanie. And I'm Michael. And welcome to Uplift Stitches. We are a married couple and this channel is a place where we talk about cross-stitching and board games and all the things that make our hearts happy. Yeah, and so today is uh, Sunday, October 6th, and this is floss food number 14. Yeah. Yeah, so we were past our one-year mark. Hard, yeah. Crazy, huh? <laughs> and we're almost at the 1,000 uh, subscriber mark. We are. We're very close. So that's kind of exciting as well. So. Yeah. Um, we hope you're doing wonderful on this beautiful day. It's really beautiful weather out where we are. Yeah. And, um, for, if you're new to us, we hope you enjoy what you, you see today and we'll subscribe and, uh, ring the bell and all the wonderful things that we do here. Yeah. If you're returning, we're so glad to see you again. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Um, we hope that you have had the best month that you can. Hey everyone, editing Melanie here. Uh, we realized after we filmed our video that we forgot a huge thing at the beginning of this video, and that is that we wanted to say thank you so much to all of our very dear friends. Um, all of you who left such kind comments on our last video congratulating us on our one year false anniversary. We appreciate that so much. We've really enjoyed being a part of this community. Um, also, thank you to a few other Flostubers who shouted us out and congratulated us. We appreciate that so much. Um, we just have loved making this video so much and it means so much to us that you have connected with us and that you're our friends. Thank you so much. We love you. Usually, um, we'll start off with a little, some life updates, um, mm -hmm. but if you're not interested in that and just want to get to the cross stitch, you can't use, we have chapters uh, mm -hmm. on our uh, timeline below, so you can kind of use those to skip around how you want. Uh, and then we'll usually talk about our cross stitch before we talk about our games at the end. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess, do we want to start it with our update in life? Yeah, we had a very busy September. It was very, this is a very busy time of year, I think, for most people. Yeah. Isn't it? But it, yeah. I always get surprised by how busy it gets. I always think, well, we have all these free weekends, and then <laughs> I turn around and they're all filled. Yeah. So uh, this last month, we, we had, you went to a family camp out. Yeah, so my extended family does a camp out every year in September, sometime in September. And so this year we did it the... Uh, first full weekend it is the first full weekend of yeah. september yeah um so basically anybody in the family can come uh, we go to one of the missouri state parks that's about an hour usually we kind of stay within an hour to an hour and a half radius of the city of st louis because that's where a majority of the family lives and um, so this year we stayed at washington state park which is about an hour south of st louis and it's a really nice park i've been camping there since i was a little kid um, but yeah, this is just a fun family tradition that we have. Um, there were a whole bunch of us camping and we had a lot of fun. There was hiking, there was, um, discovering nature, there was stories around the campfire. Um, yeah, I just had a wonderful time, uh, with my family that weekend. She did. I didn't end up going. Um, you had some work to catch up I on. I had work to catch up on, grading to do for my classes. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a busy time for me. So I, I stayed home, did mostly caught up and stuff and. She had a great time, but I got to I got to hear all about the fun when she got back. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next weekend was also an exciting weekend. Yeah, we went to the Needlework Galleria, which is held in St. Charles. Yes, St. Charles, mm -hmm. so uh, in the convention center, and it was it was a lot of it always is a lot of fun. Yeah, so. we had a wonderful time. We went. Michael works half days on Fridays usually, so we uh, went right after Michael got off work and spent the whole afternoon there. It yeah. was so nice to visit great. with. Um, some all the all different the designers and different designers and, and returning uh, shop owners that we'd seen previously that actually remembered mm -hmm. us, which was fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and we ended up buying way more than we we bought less spent. than last year. Less than last year because I went back and watched our video from last year, and we bought about half of what we bought last year. I did not realize that. Yeah, I thought we bought a lot, but I guess we didn't. Yeah, <laughs> well, we oh. still did buy a lot though, so our purchase section is going to be. A little packed. A little packed, our, our whole section, but it was such a lot of, uh, such fun, really. It really yeah, was. it was so. great. It's always exciting to see the shop models in person and, yeah, just be in an environment with other stitchers who love doing this as much as we do. Yeah, we know there's some other stitchers that they went to it, uh, at least a couple of local stitchers. Yeah. Which is always, it's always fun to see who you run into, which didn't, we didn't run into anybody that I, besides the shop owners that I no. recognized. Yeah, not this time. Well, last time we did, so. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was that weekend. It was a lot of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the next weekend was also a lot of fun. Well, I think 
the weekend before. So before that weekend, I actually helped um, my sister-in-law to kit up her first cross-stitch project. Oh, yeah. I, that was a lot of fun. I forgot about that. Yeah, we had a little lunch date. We went out to uh, Salt and Smoke, which is a barbecue place on the little um, kind of old Main Street in St. Charles. And then we went to the craft store and we got the DMC and some fabric and everything she needed to start her first cross-stitch project. So yeah. that was fun. That was definitely fun. <laughs> I, had, I had forgotten all about it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, but the, the weekend after the needlework gallery was a, a, a wedding. Yeah, family, so. my goddaughter Rachel got married and we had a wonderful time. Once again, that was in St. Charles. We were spending a lot of time in St. Charles. We were, <laughs> but it was fun. Uh, it was a, a night, really beautiful ceremony out, outdoors. Oh, it was beautiful. Uh, everything was kind of autumn themed and it was just, the be- weather was beautiful and... They're just a beautiful couple, and we're so excited for them. Yeah, we had some great food afterwards, some dancing. There was a lot of dancing. <laughs> so it was it was a great night. Yeah, uh, we had a great time. Yeah, so, uh, and your your parents stayed over that weekend, right? So we, yeah, they stayed here, so we all drove to the wedding together, and we had a nice time visiting with them. Yeah, so it was it was a fun weekend. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see, and the next weekend we had a, a family game day, right? That was the weekend. No, we got together with friends. Our friends came over for game day. Oh, that's right. That's right. That was, it was, uh, our friends came over for yeah. game day. Yeah. Um, and we spent pretty much just all day gaming. Yeah. I mean, good food good, and lots of games. Yeah. So, so it was, it was been a fun last several. Yeah. And then this weekends. weekend, we're celebrating Michael's birthday all weekend. Yes, it birthday. is my birthday. Yeah. I'm trying to stay golden, as you can see. <laughs> Yeah, so yesterday we celebrated with Michael's family. We played a bunch of games. And played a bunch of games, had some great food. I had I requested tacos. Yeah, we made tacos and carrot cake. And carrot cake, which That's is my favorite. favorite. So <laughs> it was it was a fun time celebrating with Yeah, and today we're going to celebrate with my family. And yeah. yeah. So yeah, that, that that's really the life updates. But it's been busy, as you can see. You've been very busy at work also. Work has been super busy. Um, mm. I know we're... Roughly the, the halfway point of the, okay. the semester, so it's almost like it's like midtermish for the sixteen week courses. The uh, almost would say midterms, the four week courses are getting close to drawing down. Mm-hmm. Other eight week courses, I mean, uh, mm-hmm. and so everything is kind of all the faculty are scrambling to get make sure things the final exams are all set up properly, and they're not always working. And so I'm, I'm having to fix stuff for them, and it's it's really a crazy time at work right now. So yeah, but. And I'm still not feeling 100%, but uh, we do finally have an appointment with a specialist, so so that'll be good. Hopefully in November we'll have some more answers. And, right. and maybe a path forward on how to, yeah. how to address what's going on. So yeah, so yeah that's, that's what's coming up in, the, that's coming up in November, so. Yeah. Also, we wanted to say that um, in our last few videos we had mentioned that we've been caring for someone, and that person is doing well enough that they're mostly on their own now. Yeah, we, we do still go over once, yeah, we once, kind of once or twice a week. cut back to going once a week, so and that's kind of helped us a lot to have more time to ourselves and to get some stuff done. That, that we, yeah, some <laughs> stuff that's kind of languished because we didn't have time, really. Yeah, so. yeah. It's also helped to relieve a lot of stress, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so yeah, that was that's pretty much the past month in a nutshell for us. But it's it was it's been a crazy but fun month, I think. It was overall. busy. We're excited that autumn is here. Autumn is my favorite time of year, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not alone. Not, there's a lot of stitchers out there who are excited yeah. about autumn, so yeah. Yeah. I always look forward to the fall, the cool weather, and the chilly. And yeah, the, the I've been putting outs. pumpkin pie spice in my coffee. Yeah, so, <laughs> and I, I just got some additions for my, I have a Halloween village, mm. so I got some additions for my birthday yesterday, which I'll be putting out, and uh, yeah, so I'm, I always love this time of year. It's definitely my favorite time. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing the great pumpkin, so... <laughs> All right, uh, I, I guess do we want to move on to our cross-stitch stuff? Yeah, it's cross-stitch time. It's cross-stitch time. <laughs> um, I guess we usually we start with fully finished objects, but I don't think we, we don't have, have any. any. But we do have some finishes. We do. I even have a finish. You do. So, which doesn't happen often because I have larger projects. But, yeah. But we do have finishes. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? I'll start because you have one and I have four. Yeah, so if she has four finishes, I have one. <laughs> I'm just, Which is what I think is going to be the opposite way with the works in progress. I'm still, I'm still proud of my one finish. So. You should be. <laughs> you worked on it a lot. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is something that we talked about as being a plan in our last video. And that is something from the Cross Stitch the Forest book by Max Pigeon of Pigeon Coop Designs. Um, Michael and I had both mentioned that we were planning on starting this, starting a, one project each 
on the same day. We didn't know what that day was going to be. It's, but then there was one day that we kind of looked at each other and like, said... It's time. It's yeah. time. <laughs> yes. We already had the project figured out and, and kitted up. So it was just a question of when we felt like starting. Yeah. So I went ahead and I did Rowdy J. Um, which is just beautiful. I picked this one because of the autumn leaves that are on there. And we have a large... I don't know what a group of blue jays is called, but it's it seems like a family to me. We can insert that when we figure it out. Oh, uh, blue jays out, in our neighborhood. They actually live in trees like next to our house. They do. They're always so we they come hear and see them all the time. Yeah. There are a lot of neighbors. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll give this to you because you've got one later. I do have one later for that. Um, but here's my finish. Yeah, it turned out great. It's beautiful. I just love how it looks. I love his patterns. It's just. The, the the color scheming and yeah just, it's I love beautiful. his uh, designs it's so nice. this is um, I used all the called for threads and I stitched it one over two this was a it was marked as a thirty six count linen but it's actually a forty three count my dad and I both counted it and it's much smaller than what the tag said so I don't know the name of it because I also don't know if the name of it was wrong or the dyer name was wrong since the number was wrong. So we're going to call this a mystery linen. It's like a yellow and a cream. But I just think it looks really nice uh, with the blue and those leaves. Any ideas how you're going to finish it? So I bought a frame. You can probably see there's wrinkles. Um, a very small frame. But I didn't have time to fully finish it. But I did stick it in it to see how it looked. And I think it'll work. Awesome. Yeah, so that's my first finish. Your first finish, yeah. Do you want to do another one before? Yeah, I I'll do another one. Uh, the next one that I did, something that I mentioned that I might do this past month, is work on some of my little sheep virtues um, from Little House Needleworks. I have two that I have left in this series, and I did work on one of them this past month. I worked on Love. Uh, and here it is. I started and finished this. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah, I like how these are turning out. As I said, I only have one more left. And then I do also have the pattern for the shepherd, which I'll also probably do. And I'm waiting to fully finish these until I finish all of them and kind of have a better idea. I have a whole bunch of different ideas about how I might do this. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to figure out how I will. Um, but I'm stitching, I'm stitching all of these on a 32 count Ren by Picture This Plus. And I'm using most of the called for colors. The only thing that I'm changing is the white. Um, it calls for a crew and I've been using 3865 just so that they're a little bit brighter on this fabric. Yeah. Yeah. I think but it yeah. was a good choice. Yeah. I like how it looked. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see my full finish. Yeah. Let's see your big finish. My big finish. Your big exciting finish. This one's been coming for a while. Uh, I think last time, I don't remember where it was. And I didn't. We well, forgot to take pictures. I forgot to take pictures the last time of where it was, but I, I know <laughs> I had most of the back. I had all the, the main stitching done. I was doing... Yeah. I maybe had a little bit of a background fit and then a lot of backstitching and the, the name. So this one is my Stardew Valley Sal. Uh, this was by Jay Marie. Uh, Jay Marie does crafts. Uh, and I stitched this one on 18 count Rustica Oatmeal Aida by Zweigart. And I did it one over one. Using mostly the call fours. Um, you can see the, the pond down there. I don't know if you can see the sparkle or not, but that one is a, a, an etoile, but most of the same colors were used throughout this that was called for. And I think it turned out really good. I called it Phoenix Farm. Um, Phoenix kind of took a little bit more special meaning for us after the the house fire. And we kind of rebuilt our lives from from that. So that's kind of has special meaning. I did actually remember to put my initials in the, in the year down below. But I think it turned out really great. Uh, that backstitching really just makes everything. Yeah, the backstitching, once, you, once I got that in, it really made everything kind of feel like a farm. And really pop. And I think I, I really love all the other patterns, uh, the the little mini patterns as well. I think they turned out great. So, so that one was a lot of fun and exciting. I think I'm gonna frame it, probably put it in my office. So, mm -hmm. but I'm really happy with that one. That that is a sal that I, I think I mostly kept up with, for the, yeah. except for the background, obviously. You did. But so, it turned out really good. Yeah. So, yeah, that that was a project that had been a long. I guess when I started at the beginning of this year. Was that when it started? I don't remember. I don't remember either. Mm. But it did. It finished a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Yeah. And I finished shortly after that when I finished the background stitching. And so, yeah, it was exciting. Yeah. I was really excited. We were both excited. 
I have another style that's it's almost finished, but I'll, I'll talk about that when I talk about my whips. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, so that's my only finish. What, what it's you about your... such an impressive finish, though. It, yeah, it's a lot of <laughs> stitching. That's a lot of stitches yeah. there because it's full coverage. Yeah. So, but yeah, I was I was really pleased with it. Mm -hmm. So, so what's your next uh, finish? Okay, my next one was a start another start and finish. Um, on the first day of autumn, I decided to start an autumn project, and so I started um, Doodles Autumn by Heart and Hand. This was a pattern my mom had stitched last year, and then she passed to me, and I thought it was cute. It's cute and the little owl. I like the owl. Yeah. He's super cute. I love an owl. So here is my finish. Yeah. So I stitched this on the 18 count Rustico Oatmeal Ada. And I stitched one over one with the called four colors. Um, the pattern, maybe you noticed, there's little buttons here. Of course, my mom had stitched this already, so she used up the buttons. So I'm going to try to find another type of button, or I might stitch something to go here. I haven't decided yet. You can also do some like some some fancy stitches uh, there in place of the buttons. Yeah, that's true. I thought about doing like a smaller bird next to it. You could. Like looking toward this bird. There's lots of options. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't decided that, but I finished it as it's called for, for now. Um, I did use, oh, I didn't exactly use the called for colors because it calls for fancy floss but i use the dmc conversion called for conversion colors and i'm happy with how it turned out yeah i'll probably turn this into a little pillow and i'll probably have it done in time to have it up after our halloween stuff goes down but yeah i really like how it turned yeah, out i think it's done great yeah and then the last thing that i finished i was able to finish thanks to my friend sally yes thank you over sally. at sally stitches in <laughs> um she sent me little lengths of the last few colors that I needed to finish this project. Um, Michael said that he was like skipping all the way back from the mailbox. I was. <laughs> the day that he went to get it <laughs> yes. from the mailbox for me. Um, but uh, thank you, Sally. I appreciate your kindness. And I'm also enjoying seeing your progress on this. Um, but I finished 324 by Works by ABC. This was a project that a whole bunch of people started on March 24th, and I decided that I was going to finish it on September 24th, so 924. Yeah. So it took me exactly six months to do it. It's been fun watching you stitch on that. Yeah. I've seen the progress. I've really enjoyed it. And here's how it looks now. Woo! It's awesome. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. I love it. I love a rainbow. I love, I really enjoyed working on this project. It was nice because there's kind of this variety of these little squares, which are easy and quick and nice to do. And all of these designs, which are a lot of fun and a little more thinky. But yeah, I just love, I love this so much. It's beautiful. Yeah. I stitched this on a 36 count sky linen by my vintage needle arts and I used all 324 called for DMC colors. It's great. Yeah. So this is definitely going to be framed and put in here somewhere. I also am thinking about doing this again in another way. Oh. But I need to formulate that idea. It's exciting. A little bit more. But yeah, I love this. And thanks, Sally and my mom and dad, for helping me Complete get the, the little lengths yes. that I needed. Yeah. 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 Hooray! Yeah, we don't yet have a full set of uh, DMC flosses. So. No, we're close. We're close, but not we're very quite close. There. And that's it for my finishes. That's it for your finishes? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, so, uh, start, start slash whips, I guess? Yeah. So, I, have, I do have a start, which is also from this book here. Um... So the one I decided to start, which had a really fall and like, like a campy feel, because I was in the mood for camp, camping uh, type stitching, even though I didn't end up going this year, uh, was Upon a Star. Um, that's this one here. Uh, I think I have it so you can, oh, there's a cool layer. So I really, I, I really like the wolf and the moon and the shooting star, which I, I always have loved astronomy too. So mm -hmm. I decided to, to stitch this one and I am doing it on black, um, which I hadn't stitched on in a long time. I think the last black project I did was... It was the very first thing you did, wasn't it? 
No, the last one I did was the Star Wars one. Oh, yeah, that's right. The, the Dimension Kids. I forgot about that. The Dimension Star Wars yeah. one. But the, the very first project I did was actually on black. As a beginning stitcher, I did <laughs> black, and I was stitching black on black for a while on, on that project, which if you're a beginning stitcher, I definitely don't recommend. I didn't want to crush your dreams, but... I, I had a good time with it, and I, I think I'm going to stitch again at some point. Yeah. But I uh, definitely don't recommend the black on black for a beginning st <laughs> stitcher. So this is... This is uh, 22, well, it, it was, I thought it was 20 count it when I started. Count. It was labeled as 20 count. <laughs> and I was like, these look really, really small compared to what I usually, I'm used, I stitched in 20 count a lot. So it didn't seem right. So I had her, she had said, you should probably measure. So I measured it and it's actually 22 count. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm doing it okay. The black's working out. I really like the way this one's looking. Uh, he, as I said, I love his patterns and the way he does his colors and, I just think it's this is a really beautiful. I like not stitching the black and having it just kind of be, mm. you know, the the wolf in that. So this is the the big part in the middle is the the big tree and the pattern that you saw. I'm I'm really enjoying this stitch. It's going pretty surprisingly quickly considering it's a twenty two count. Yeah. Um, now is this your first time going like bottom up on a pattern? This is my, my first time using going bottom up on a pattern. I don't do. I usually start in the top left most of the time. Um, once in a while, I start start in the center, but I don't usually do bottom up. But because of the way the pattern is looking, you know, because it kind of pyramids up towards, and there's like sparse things at the very top, mm. I decided to start at the bottom and kind of go up, which is actually what I think I'm going to do in one of the, the the plans that I have for a start coming up. But mm -hmm. I really like this one. I think this is a beautiful pattern, and I'm just I'm really enjoying it. So that was my start. Yep. Um, I guess I should do another one since you mm -hmm. don't have that many. Yeah. Not that many in this category because you started and finished <laughs> many of them. <laughs> so this one is, um, oh, I, I think, I mean, I already said who that's by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I'm just, oh, the last one, I'm just doing it one over one uh, mm -hmm. with the call fours, which are really beautiful. So this one is um, my Lighthouse by White Raven Patterns. I'm doing this on 20 Counts Weigart one over one. And this was my start from our, our uh, cruise that we took. I started this one when we went up to Alaska. And I think I, I know I had the first one done. I just had a tiny bit on, on the uh, on the left hand or right hand side. Um, and I made quite a bit of progress on this. This one is using my late night stitch because it stitches really easily when my eyes are tired and mm -hmm. I don't make a lot of mistakes, which, you know, morning me has to go and then frog would correct. <laughs> so. I, I try to avoid that as much as I can, which I, I know most stitchers do. So this one's turned out really nice. I decided to, to work on the 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 one the next page over instead of down where the rest of the lighthouse is to give myself that to look forward to later. So this is more of just the light coming out, and then I think there's some promontory maybe down below. So this one has really turned out well. I like I really like the way uh, this one's looking. So it's an easy stitch. It's kind of my my switch switch because a lot of my a lot of my big patterns seem to have a lot of uh, confetti stitching mm -hmm. for a lot of the stuff. And you're just using the... I'm call just the using thing. the call fours uh, on that one. I I like the blue the blue she, she shows in. Mm -hmm. and, and do you know what size that is? I know it's just a white. It's a white. I think it's... I think I wrote it down. Did I write it down? I did write it down. It's 20 count white uh, white swag art okay. uh, with one over one. Um, I usually, I prefer doing things one over one. I don't really like to, I think that's part of the reason I don't stitch on linen and stuff. I don't like to go into over two as much, but, and I don't think my eyes are good enough to do one over one on like a 28 count or a 36 <laughs> count, any of those. My eyes aren't quite that good. <laughs> Maybe a younger me could have done that. Yeah. But. You could still do it. I could. We'll see. Who knows if I, I'm, I'm doing 22 count, so I could try for a 25 count maybe. We'll see. We'll see where things go on that for, <laughs> for every card. I'm, I'm, I like to push myself a little bit, but I also don't want to be uncomfortable stitching. Mm. So, so that's my uh, my second whip. I only I have only have one more that I actually can show. The other one, one of them is a stitching kindness I'm working on. Mm -hmm. So that can't really be shown. Mm -hmm. Okay, well I'll show mine then. So the other thing that I worked on this month is counting puddles. Or I always want to call this counting puddles because that's the name that's at the top. But that's the name of the designer is counting puddles. Counting puddles. And this pattern is called Spooktacular Party. And this was something that I picked up at Galleria last year and started right away. And then I set it down most of the year. So that came back out and I did a ton of stitching because I worked on this for like two weeks straight. Yeah, it's looking really great. And this is how it looks now. That's a lot of stitching too. Yeah, so I went in and did, well, I finished the leaves over here. I think I had these two leaves mostly done. So I finished those and then I did all of the dark green and these two little leaves down here. 
And then I filled in all of the oranges on this pumpkin. I had already finished the face, but I finished all of the oranges. And then I came up here and I did this little ghost and I did this little ghost and I started the green over here. And Friday night, I kind of was like, I feel- She feels a Like she I'm ready to set this down, so. I'll set it down. I may pull it out again this month. I may not. Yeah. Either way, it's fine because yeah. it'll be here in her next year. Yeah. Give you really, all I have left is there's a few more. There's another pumpkin and a few more. There's a few more leaves and vine over here. And then there's one more pumpkin here. And then there's a bunch of backstitching. There's a ton of backstitching on this. But that's part of what's going to make it look so magical and fun. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I am loving how this is looking. I'm stitching this on a 30. Oh, no. I'm stitching this on 28 count um, slate by Fabrics by Stephanie. So yeah, that's been a lot of fun for you. Yeah. Spooky. And it'll come out this this year or it'll come out next year. Yeah. Depending on how you feel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so my last one um, is the forest fairy tale I've been stitching, which I've, I've been keeping up with somehow. Um, and this that's by Quaternion. Um, so I'm stitching this one on 20 count California Sage Aida by Live and Die LA. I'm doing it one over one, but I am not using the called fours. I'm actually stitching this with some color and cotton that I chose, uh, which I can put the num the names of them down below. I don't remember the names mm, of them. Okay. Um, I think they're all special editions, so they're um, if they're out, they may not be coming back in circulation. Well, yeah, we live about an hour away from the color and cotton store. Yeah. So so, yeah. so this is what I don't remember exactly. You were working on the cats last time. I was working on the cats. I don't think you had finished them yet. So the cats is is one I finished, and then there is the uh, um, finished Rapunzel. The Rapunzel that was the next one with the big tower and her hair coming hanging down, and then on the bottom there is uh, Hansel and Gretel with the trail of breadcrumbs going through the forest. That's the last one that just got released, and I think there are two more. But I'm really in, been enjoy. I really enjoyed this stitch. I'm gonna be sad when it's over. Oh. Uh, but it's. I think the colors have looked really good. I'll see if I can go back a little bit so you can see the whole pattern. But I think it's turning out really well. It looks uh, so cool. The coloring scheme is looking really beautiful, and I, I love the variation on it. I'm glad I chose the colors I did. I'm so. This one has been one of my favorite projects and sadly almost one of my finished projects. Well, I saw she had a poll on Instagram about what her next her next saddle should be. Oh, I should probably get so on there. When will come? I should, I should tell you what my vote would be. You can, you can vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> Since I don't have Instagram really. Yeah. Um, but that has been one of my favorite uh, stitches that I've been doing lately. And I'm happy that it's coming to an end, but also sad. Yeah. So it's kind of that mixed feeling of excitement at the joy of finishing but also i really have enjoyed it so. yeah so there which is... i understand because that's part of why i'm thinking about stitching three two four again i don't know if i would <laughs> stitch that again right away but i definitely enjoyed it a lot yeah so. yeah it's, it's been a fun project so i've been looking at the other other her other patterns mm -hmm. she has now to see if there's anything i want to stitch mm -hmm. or i'll pay attention to what she's she's going to be doing next yeah. so we'll see yeah uh, but that's been that's my last stitch that I can show that's a whip. Mm -hmm. So the other one is, is a stitching kindness, which I'm hoping to finish within the next month or so. Mm -hmm. Get it fully finished and send off to the person. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. All right. Um, what's next? Uh, future starts? Next, we usually talk about purchases. Oh, per oh, yeah. So buckle in. Yeah, buckle in. We have quite it's a bit. Not, it's not an overwhelming one. It is a lot. It is a lot. So if that's something that bothers you, skip ahead. Yes, if you don't want to see a lot of purchases. That's but. Why. We did make. But it's not as much as last year. Less than last year, so. We'll I'm, start with our non-gallery of purchases, which I had, I went and picked up the next issue of just Cross Stitch Magazine. Um, there is a Carolyn Manning stitch along that's in these that I'm going to be starting next year. So that's why I've been picking all of these up this year. Um, there's some cute autumn things in here. There's actually a pattern by uh, Flossy Fox Shop. That's very cute. Kind okay. of I, think, I think I've seen a pattern or two in some of the books you bought that I might stitch. So. Yeah, but I got that. I also put in an order to 123 Stitch for... I looked at all of the snow friends that I'm planning on starting and figured out which threads I need. I also got the threads for 
Oh Joyous Day, which I keep trying to finish. You'll get there. So I finally ordered those. <laughs> and then I also ordered, I got um, two Mill Hill friends. Because we had both finished a Mill Hill project last year. And I want to finish those before the Christmas stuff goes oh, Yeah, because those were Christmas ones. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So. so those will come, I think they'll be here this week. Oh, already? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so so those were non-gallery approved. I don't think you had any. I had none. Yeah. Uh, mine were just gallery, but there was plenty of calories. There. Yeah. So, do you want me to start? Do you want to start? So, as we said, the gallery was holding the MC Suites in St. Charles. It's a fun time. If you live anywhere within driving distance, it's definitely worth yeah. making a trip in. It's a lot of fun. So. Okay. So, I think we're going to start with fabrics. We can start with fabrics. Okay. Yeah. Grab our stack of fabrics. Yeah. All right. Who do you got? Who do I got or who do you yeah, got? Yeah, you go first. Me go first? Yeah. Okay, so my first one was by Atomic Ranch Fabrics. This is called Desert Night. It's 20 count Aida. And this one already has a project in mind for. Ooh. So I'll go ahead and open it up so you can kind of see. But I think. It's like a blue and gray. Blue and, and gray tan? and tan ish. I, it's just, it's a beautiful. It's really cool. I love the modeling on it. And I have a. A project in mind for it, which I'll talk about when I when we mm. get to there. But that one is already spoken for, at least part of it. Yeah. I don't know how much of it will be spoken for, but. So. Was that the only atomic wrench you got? There is one more in here buried, which I think they got out of order. But uh, there was the other one. This was the other one I got. My atomic wrench is also a 20 count. Um, Aida, this is called Pumpkin King. Cool. I, I saw this. I was like, I had to have this. and It's just a beautiful autumn Halloween-ish, or, you know, kind of a color. Yeah, it's like black and orange. Black and orange. And Almost purple, gray. Yeah. This is just a beautiful modeling. As soon as I seen it, I was like, this this is going home with me. I don't know. I didn't get a full, you know, I only got, a, I think, a quarter. Mm -hmm. But I, I had to have that because I don't have any good oranges, and <laughs> it's just a beautiful color. And then I got one from Atomic Ranch, and that is Wild Mint. It's like a green, a pale green. Yeah. And gray. Which I really like. <laughs> we liked meeting the Atomic Ranch people. They were so sweet. They were really sweet. Um, they showed us a project that one of them is working on on Pumpkin King also, and it looked really good. Yeah, these two were from the same one. I don't remember. This one was from Silver Needle. Do you have any from Silver Needle? No. Okay. So the next one I got was from Silver Needle. This is eighteen count Aida. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't have any purples, and I thought this one fits the bill really well. Mm -hmm. And I, I had considered this for the other project I had spoke or just mentioned recently, but uh, the other fabrics I think it's going to be used. So this one has not been spoken for. I imagine you may end up stitching something on it. We'll find out. But I do, I do have, I have a use for purple at times. So I'm sure there will be a project or two that I stitch on it. Just mm -hmm. I'm not sure which ones yet. <laughs> So that was by Silver Silver Needle uh, from that shop. Um, me, you. Let's do this one. Yeah. The Needle Blings. Yeah, we had a great time visiting with the Needle Blings. Needle Bling has been great. I they love it. recognized us as soon as we walked in. Yes. I and it was Teresa's birthday, so they were celebrating that. Yeah, we got we got a picture with them. I think. Yeah, we did. So we can probably we can probably put that in. But this <laughs> this one is uh, Needle Bling. This is called Spellbound. I don't really, I don't think this is the one I know what I have used for. Maybe if I did. I bought Spellbound last year in linen and I used it all. Yeah. I don't think I have anything She else. may borrow some of this at some point. Well, it's a really great, it's like a bluish gray. It's like a bluish gray. It's a really it's nice It's got some neutral. white modeling. Um, it's just a beautiful fabric mm -hmm. and I will have a use for it. I don't remember, I don't think I have a specific project in mind for it. But. And I got two fabrics from them. I got um, 40 count suede. It's a really nice. Um, neutral, like a brownish, orangish almost, and cream. So I know I'll use that. And I also got a mushroom light mocha, Ooh. which is a really um, a nice lighter neutral linen color. So yeah, I needed some lighter neutrals. Some lighter neutrals. Yeah, so that'll be really nice. Forward to using both of those. Yeah, see, my, my stash was the opposite. I, I was I had lots of like kind of neutrally cut ones, but not a lot of color ones. Yeah, well, those are the only ones I got, even though that was kind of at the top of my top of your list. shopping list. Yeah, I also got a piece of fabric from um, Laura's Fabrics. 
and it looks like it's called Skyella. Ooh, that's a pretty color. Yeah, it's like a bunch of blues, like Ooh, light to I like that. dark denim. I thought it would be cool to do like a monochromatic piece in white on this. Yeah. Or this would be good for some snow friends. That's also what I was thinking. I said snow friends would really pop on this fabric. Yeah, that's a pretty good But fabric. yeah, I just thought it was really cool. And I've used some of Laura's fabrics before, and I really like the way that Did it this one come feels. from the same one as these, or I don't remember? Mm, Where did no, I, I thought you got this as a silver needle also. Did I get this as a silver needle? Yeah, because you went back for it. Oh, that's right. I did go back for that. Okay. You were debating, and then you said yes. Yeah, so this one is an 18-count uh, Aida. It's a slate, and I got a full half yard of it. It's... I'll stretch it out the entire length because it's pretty big. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of a nice, light gray modeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one also has a, a project in mind. This is for my parks, which I'll talk about later, but mm. I got it so big because the project itself is huge. So I needed a lot of fabric for it. Yeah. But that's, that's slate by uh, silver needle. I forgot. I had to go back for that. Cause I was like, oh yeah, I needed fabric for that. And they had a nice yeah. option. For well, it. I think you wanted to wait until we had looked at all of the dyers who were there. Yeah. Before you went back to the silver needle trunk show. Yeah. yeah, and then I purchased that one. So, yeah. so that was so that was also silver needle. Yeah. Um, the last ones I got were from Rom Rami's Creation. Mm -hmm. Rami's Creation. Mm -hmm. Um, they don't really have names that I remember. Mm -hmm. They probably did. Maybe even I didn't. She just does like specialty small batch. So this one, it's like a pink, uh, reddish one. On the other side, it has like peach also. It's like peach. Yeah, like orange and. It's, I don't know what I'll use it for, but I was like, this is really unique. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like it, so mm -hmm. it's going home with me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm sure I'll find some use for it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also had an, an also 18 count Aida by her. It's like a blue, purple. Mm -hmm. um, this, it's definitely not showing the same color on the screen as it is here. No, it's more vibrant. I don't know. I think I can... I don't... Sort of. Yeah. Maybe. Sort of a little bit it's a little bit closer there, but not quite. It's mm -hmm. it's definitely not showing up really mm -hmm. well. It's vibrant. It's very vibrant. Um because I didn't have any good vibrant blues left. I have some paler blues. Mm -hmm. And this mint this is like a mint color. It's also eighteen count Aida by them or her. But I really like this one. I think this one has some also some nice modeling. Mm -hmm. Um this one could also work as a, a little bit of a sky, possibly, too. Or I'm not really sure what I'll, I'll stitch on it, but mm -hmm. I needed to refill some color options for my stitching because I, I tend to go with color more than yeah. Nipples. Romy also does threads, and I bought this um, Autumn Vibes, which is sort of like um, pastel autumn colors, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. So I'll find something for that. She also uh, paints. So I got this cute little... Um, like false <laughs> keeper, it's winter friends. Yeah, they're so cute. They will live in our house. They couldn't. They couldn't stay there. They had to come home. That is all my fabrics. Yeah, and the other fabrics that I got were from Grace Notes Fabrics. I was so excited to oh. see their fabric. I'm so excited to work on these. I got a uh, 32 count symphony, which is a purple, like a grayish purple. Yeah, the, the colors definitely don't show the same on the screen, unfortunately. I mean, they get an idea. They get an idea, but... I got 36 count Serenade, which is like a pink. Ooh, I like that one. A pink and cream. I didn't have any pinks in my closet. Oh, well, now so you So I do. said, now I have pink. I think you debated the pinks for a while. I did, and then you said, just get them. I said, just get them, because get them. you'll use them. And then I also got 36 count Lento. Oh, that's a really pretty Just like a fuchsia. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I like this one. Any idea what you're going to stitch on? I have no idea, but I'm very <laughs> excited. I also got two lighter purples, which I'm not going to show because I'm thinking that one of them will be getting to be purple. Oh. Okay. So, yeah, that is all our fabrics, but that's quite a bit of fabrics. Yeah. Um... And then we have her. But purple. I filled some gaps because you all know that I like purple, so I needed needed she the need, purple. She needed the purple. And I needed some like neutrals, so okay. Yes, I needed to fill out my my non-neutrals because I, I have yeah. lots of neutrals. I don't stitch on neutral as much. Yeah. So 
Um, so that is it for our actual fabric. We do have a lot, a number of patterns we purchased. Yes. I also got this. I can't remember where I got this from. Where did you get that from? It's a little scissor fob with snow friends on it. Isn't that cute? I don't remember. I'm trying to think of where. That was... I don't remember. They had a whole bunch of them. Was that the same shop Bits where Bits and I... Bobs, maybe? That was the shop where I think where I got all the mill holes from. No. No? No. No. Okay. You got that from Inspire New. Oh, so that's right. That's right. But yeah, this had to come on with one. So we have our, 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 our patterns. Yeah. Uh, do you want to start? Do you, I think you have I have patterns. way more than you do. You have way more than I do, so you, why don't you start? Okay, well, from the Silver Needle, I'll go ahead and grab mine. I picked up this um, kit, a Satsuma Street kit, Mitten Kitten. This is something that has been on my heart for the last couple of months, and I thought if I saw it at Gallery, I would buy it. Um, my sister-in-law's cat, Piglet, passed away, yes. and she was a very dear friend, and so I think I'm going to... I've been wanting to stitch this as a memorial for Piglet and put her little picture on the back um, so we can have that on our tree at Christmas time. Yeah, yeah. that'll be nice. Yeah. That'll be very sweet. So I'll stitch that for Piglet. And then I also got Burr It's Cold Outside by Brenda Germain. Ooh. Got snow friends. Got snow friends. Did you get anything from there? Uh, from where? Silver Needle. Silver Needle. Um, I don't think these were from... Where's this from? No, I don't think so. Okay, um, Barbie Petal Pusher was there, who I love. I brought a whole bunch of stuff from her last year and stitched it all. Um, so this year she has a new series called The Fairy Village. And so I bought the Salt Box Fairy Village, which is cute and springy. And I also bought the Coastal Fairy Village, which I liked a lot. So I'll stitch both of those in the springtime. I actually don't remember where I got my um, From the Inspired Needle, I got Feels Like Fall from With a Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais. It's one of our new ones. So I'll start this sometime this month, I know. And I also got the Frosty Tiny Town by Heart in Hand. And that was the other thing I ordered from 123 Stitch was that they didn't have the frill. So I bought the frill, which is just one more house and another snowman. So... I think that's where you got these. That's where I got these? Yeah. Okay. Because I, I did get the Mill Hills. Um, so I got The Haunted Graveyard by Mill Hill, which I thought was really spooky and fits this time of year. It may be a start sometime soon. Who knows? Um, but do it. <laughs> and this one, I know you, this is the one your mom used. Who is My mom it? did this last yeah. year. And then we saw Corinne also Cor it. Corinne also. Corey uh, Creates. Corey Creates. I, I may see if she wants to do a start along with this one. Uh, when she gets ready, because I really like the gingerbread house. It's cute. It's super cute, and uh, I just needed to stitch it. So, okay. uh, and then I also got Cardinal Forest. I'm trying not, trying not to have the glare on it. Um, this one might be a gift for mom, my mom. So, mm -hmm. uh, she loves cardinals, so that one might be for her at some point here. Yeah. Um, Another shop that we went to that we had a really lovely visit with Judy from JW oh yeah, Designs. Judy. We had a great conversation with her. There was no one else in the shop uh, when we were in there. And so we talked a lot about stitching and she was excited that Michael was a stitcher and yes. talking about how. That always comes up a lot. For, uh, you know, are you a stitcher or are you not a stitcher? Because I guess there's a lot of husbands that come to that are not stitchers. Yeah. And just <laughs> are just there <laughs> to support. Everyone gets excited when they see Michael buying things to stitch. Yes. So. <laughs> so I got a few things that have been, I've been waiting to get because I knew that Judy was going to be there. Um, and that is Flights of Fancy by JBW Designs, which I love. It's beautiful. Birds, of course. I also got Birds in the Round, because birds. Because birds. And I also got the French Country Snowman. It was super cute. So I got, I think I had a couple of rounds, but one of them I can't show because it, it may end up being a, a stitching kindness for somebody. Yeah. So, uh, but this one I got was Fall in the Round, which I, I did one You of, had done Halloween I'd in the Round. I'd done Halloween in the Round. A few years ago. And I really like this. I love the little birds and the cats and the little squirrel. Mm -hmm. um, so this one felt like a good fall stitch for me. Mm -hmm. this, this also could be a star, who knows? Um, I'm in, gonna end up with weight more whips than I'm used to, so we'll see. <laughs> and then the last thing that I purchased was from Karen at Rosewood Manor, and that is Birds of Quaker. I had intended on buying a different pattern, and then I, oh my gosh, her models are beautiful, like beautiful, stunning. 
if you ever get a chance to see the Rosewood Manor pieces in person, like her pictures do not do them justice. Um, so I just really, I saw this and I said, well, I'm getting that instead. <laughs> so I did. So what, 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 is, what did you intend to purchase that, if you're asking? It was Flowers of Quicker. Flowers of Quicker. Which she had, and she had the thread packs for her, but I didn't like it as much as I liked this one. Once I saw them, they weren't next to each other in the room, but I looked at it, and then I looked at that, and I said, well, this one's, I would rather start this one. Yeah, that will be a start soon, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I'm going to change the colors to color and cotton threads. So next time we go there, I'll probably pick out some threads so I can start that up. So, and this was my last one. Where did I get this one? Do you remember? I have no clue. I have no clue where I got this one from. Uh, this is the Stitch Crypt um, Crustus Curiosities. I got, it's the Ominous Owl pattern. And I saw this one and I was like, this reminds me so much of um, the first game I played with your brother at, when he was DMing. Mm -hmm. I was a wizard. And this was my familiar was this exact owl. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I have to get to this. I mean, even if it's, even if, I don't know why I just felt like, I just felt I needed this because it just reminded me so much of that character. And it's going to remind me of, I might put the little owl familiar's name underneath it. Mm -hmm. uh, just because that's what it, it makes me, it reminds me of, it makes me smile. Because that was a fun campaign. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see when we end up starting a new campaign, but we'll, but I really enjoyed that one. <laughs> that one was a lot of fun, yeah. so. Um, but that was all my patterns. Yeah, that's all we purchased. Which is quite a bit. It is a bit. So, uh, if you're still with us through all that, <laughs> um, okay. I guess we, I don't think we have any stitching kindness. Oh, just Sally. Just Ellie, yes. Yeah, she sent me those threads and she sent a sweet little card. Yeah. So, really I sweet. appreciated that so much, Sally. Yeah. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you for being my friend. Yeah. Um... Shadows? I don't know. We I don't think we've watched as much Floss Tube as lately. We watched a ton, but I think we already talked about that we weren't going to do this time. Yeah. So. Just because. Yeah. Yeah. But we do have. We've been watching a lot though. We've so. been, we have been watching a fair bit, but. If you're a Floss Tuber, thank you for making content. We are enjoying it. Yeah, I think that's what our our usually go to in the evenings has been a lot of times. Yeah, lately. Lately. We don't have any good sh any shows. Really. Especially now that we're home again. Yeah. Yeah, for a while we weren't able to watch as much, but now that we're home. Now that we're home, we can actually watch them again. So, mm -hmm. um, Any plans you want to talk about? We have plans. Actually, we have plans that we're starting tomorrow. We do have plans we're starting tomorrow. That's right. Um, so We're both going to be <laughs> taking part in Laura Stitching by the Shore's Pumpkin Birthday Sale. Because my birthday is tomorrow. Because Michael's birthday is also in October. So... Yeah. We're, we're both going to start a, a pattern for that. Yeah. We love Laura and we love pumpkins. Yes. And so the one I'm starting, um, which I don't have the, the, the cover sheet, but I think you can insert it. I can insert it. Um, so she'll insert that in. It's called Festive Frosted Pumpkin Cottage mm -hmm. by the Witchy Stitcher. Mm -hmm. And I, I, saw, I saw this on Crafty Gaming Jamie. Mm -hmm. uh, she was when she was stitching that. And I was like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, okay, that's <laughs> the perfect pattern for me. <laughs> It's Christmas, but it's also Halloween. It's it combines both holidays that I love a lot. At the cute pumpkin snowman, which you'll end up stitching. Yeah. Um, so I, I this that's what this one particular fabric that I mm -hmm. showed you earlier, the uh, desert one. That is what that one's gonna go on. I debate, yeah, we did a floss toss on Friday, and I think it's gonna look good on. I that. think that's gonna look really good on that. Um, I debated that in the purple one, but this is what went out because uh, mm -hmm. I think it's gonna fit two seasons for us. Because so. mm -hmm. we're thinking about. Like keeping it out for both. Yes, I'll keep Halloween it from Halloween through and Christmas. And Christmas. So it's gonna be if, if that fits more for both seasons than just just Halloween. The purple fits really well for Halloween, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really fit for Christmas very mm -hmm. well. So so that is gonna be my uh, pumpkin birthday sal start. Mm -hmm. And you are. And gonna I'm gonna start. be starting Sleepy Hollow by Hello from Liz Matthews. I'm not gonna stitch this Sleepy Hollow thing, so I'll have to figure out something else. For there, but but it's gonna be a fun stitch. Yeah, I always refer to this as the glum pumpkin stitch. Well, because they're all glum. And I, look how glum. I, I do love that the glum pumpkin. Or I don't think it's actually called the glum pumpkin. Uh, it's called the pumpkin who couldn't smile. The pumpkin who couldn't smile, or Reckity and Manny. Yeah. So, but, so so we have some fun starts tomorrow. We do have some fun starts coming up. Um, and the the big the big fabric I showed was for my sixty three USA, which you've talked about the last several videos. Parks. Yes, and so 
I have the fabric now. I have the pattern. I have figured out what I want to do. I just need to actually figure out the exact size and mm -hmm. choose some colors for some of the other things I'm adding to the pattern. So mm -hmm. that'll be a start maybe this winter, probably, I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and as I mentioned, some of these ones I bought may end up being a start sometime mm -hmm. soonish. Um, other plans? Do you... Well, I'll probably definitely start that. Um, I love fall. Maybe. I don't know. I'm kind of, I don't know what word to use. You're kind of. I don't feel like I have a direction right now. Usually when a month is approaching, I kind of have an understanding of what I want to stitch next month. And, or this, an idea. and this month you just don't. I just feel like I have no idea. I have very clear ideas for what I want to do in November. And I think that's part of the problem. It's because the now is not November. We're not in November yet. I know. I have a whole month until then. We have a whole month of October to enjoy. Yeah. I know I'm going to do November stitching. Oh. And just stitch on birds in November. But I don't know what to stitch on in October. You have options. I do have options. <coughs> also, I watched uh, Cross Stitch of the Globe, Stephanie and Allison's free Halloween patterns and free autumn patterns. And I did um, download a few of those. So I may stitch a couple of those this month. Hey friends, it's Editing Melanie again. Uh, we realized after filming the video that we also forgot a part of our plan is that this coming Sunday on October 13th that Michael and I are going to be joining Andrew the Runner Stitcher. Um, he is going to be participating in the Chicago Marathon and he's doing a special uh, stitching challenge which is to stitch 262 stitches um, as he stitches or as he runs 26 miles. Um, so you can watch his most recent videos for a little bit more information on that if you're interested in joining in the challenge and um, helping to cheer Andrew along as he completes the marathon. Uh, we also wanted to share that a big part of my plans for this month is that this coming Saturday, October 12th, I'm going to be at the Color and Cotton Stitch Day. So if you're going to be there, um, please say hi. I am an introvert, so come and find me and be my friend. Um, I do know two people who are going to be there that I'm very excited to see and meet and talk to. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just so excited to meet some people in the stitching community, especially some local friends. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it and I hope it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm sure you'll, you'll hear more about it in our next video. Okay, um, so yeah, I think I'm going to be finishing the Forest Fairy Tales out this month. Oh, I, yeah, think, I, I think those two drops will be coming the next two weeks and I should be finished with that. I'm also thinking that I'm wanting to spend some time fully finishing things because our drawer is full. I actually looked through it the other day and pulled out. We have two Halloween pieces that were in there that I want to try to finish this month, fully finish this month, so that we can enjoy them this year, because they've been in there for a full year. We do have a full And then full there's year. also so many snow friends and Christmas and winter things. Stockings. And stockings <laughs> that I would like to try to finish before December gets here. So I think a lot of my energy that I would use during the daytime stitching will probably be spent trying to fully finish some things. Yeah, we have, we have a backlog of, of finished stuff. I do. My my drawers are full. <laughs> and I'm not really good at full finishing stuff. I help, I can yeah. I think I could probably help with framing stuff if you need help framing because that, yeah. that's but I'm not yeah. a great I'm not great at finishing stuff. I which I, I probably should get better at, but <laughs> the funny to. thing is I think I even showed either last month or the last the month before, like I had started sewing some pillows, but they're still unfilled, unfinished. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, we've been really busy so yeah. we'll, yeah. we'll we'll get there i'm sure but yeah. now that we have more time you'll be able to get some stuff finished. yeah so i know that that's a big plan that i have for this month is working on fully finishing some things yeah i have i have some pride i mean i have projects to work on the ones i've already started um but i, I think there might be at least there obviously at least one start but there might be two or three starts this month mm -hmm. depending on how i feel mm -hmm. so I don't have any a, a lot of definite plans, which is unusual for me because I usually plan a lot ahead of time. Yeah. Though I think I've learned a lot about planning too far ahead on a year's worth of stitching and then things don't really go according to plan. That's okay. It's not a big deal, but I'll probably approach next year's planning a little bit differently. Mm. So, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to give some thought, more thought to my D&D style that I had thought about. I, I don't think I have time to work on the designing a pattern that I would. Mm -hmm. I thought about, but I'm yeah. going to do this out a little bit differently. So, 
I'll give some thought to that this month and start sketching out some ideas. Mm -hmm. So that'll be one of the plans for this month. But. Um, I did not have any sewing this month. Oh, yeah. But I did just want to mention the quilt behind us um, is a top that I, a quilt top that I made last year for Michael's birthday. It's yeah. called Peekaboo. Peekaboo. <laughs> and I followed a tutorial from Missouri Star Quilt Company. Um, it is a free pattern that's on their website. And I used a bunch of different Halloween fabrics. And I'll insert a picture of the whole thing so you can see the big pumpkin face. Um, this is something that will eventually get quilted. It's too big for me to do on my machine at home. Uh, yeah, but I just wanted to mention that oh, yeah. before we move on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's it for my stitching plans, though. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's it for a cross stitch. Yeah. Um, so if you're just here for the cross stitch, we are appreciate you that you stayed with us this long and hopefully you saw some stuff you enjoyed. Yeah. Thank you for spending some time with us today. We yeah. hope you have the best month ahead. Yes. Enjoying doing the things you, you love or the people you love. And, yeah. um, yeah. if you've been impacted by the hurricane, we're thinking of you and holding you in our hearts. Yes. I'm, I really feel ill for the people because it's yeah. a really difficult thing to go through. We lost our house in a weather event. Um, and so a lot of the news coverage of it has been really hard, I think, for both of us to watch. Yes, because it, it brings back a lot of memories for us, and I, we kind of know what some of the people are going through. Yeah, thank it's, you. It's, uh, it's a difficult thing to get through, um, just losing everything and just realizing, like, you don't have, you have to start over, basically. Yeah. So, so we're definitely praying for everybody and hoping, hoping they have the help they need to help pull through. Yeah. Because it took us... <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It took us really two years to get in recovery, at least. And even then, it was, there was still a lot of recovery from that. So it's a difficult journey. Um, I'm sorry that those people have to go through it. But it's not, not a fun experience. So we hope you enjoyed some of, some of the stuff we talked about. And if you're new here uh, and you're just here for the cross edge, we hope you, you liked us enough to, to want to subscribe and, and kind of... Follow along with our journey of, of cross stitching and yeah. crafting and stuff, but we're going to get ready to move into our gaming section. Yeah. So if you're interested in that or curious about it, haven't seen been with us before, stick around. We'll get ourselves set up for that and recompose. So we'll <laughs> be back in a minute. All right, we are back yeah. and we have uh, set ourselves up. Um, so this month we are doing a little bit differently than well, we we'll start out the same way we usually do by <laughs> talking about the months that we played in the month of September. Yes, but. We end up not really playing more any more than four times, which is usually our criteria. And we only played one game. That S sense. Yes, when it, which is our usual. <laughs> so we decided I, I would probably pick some of my favorites for him. Yeah, since it's his birthday, birthday, we thought we'd talk about some of Michael's favorite games. Yes, but first we'll talk a little bit about our, our past month of gaming. Yeah, is... so I usually insert a graphic that shows um, the cover images of all the games that we played over the last month. Um, so I'll be putting that on the screen. And we'll talk a little bit about um, who we played games with this month. Yes. So we did play some games with Michael's family. Um, we played two different Monopolies. We yes. played Disney Monopoly and Golden Girls Monopoly. We also played one game of Flip 7 um, with my dad. Over the course of the month, we played one game each of Wild Gardens, Gnome Hollow, Wingspan, Trailblazers, and Arc Nova. On our game day with our friends, we played Freelancers. Castle of Mad King Ludwig, Horrified, Tesseract, and Flip 7. And then us on our own, we played two games of Wild Gardens, Pretty Clever, five games of Wingspan, two of Trekking Through History, and one each of Number Drop and Earth. Yes. So of course, the one we played more than four times. Was Wingspan, which is our most played game of all time. Yes. Um, we needed some comfort gaming. We did need some comfort gaming. It, it had been a, lo a very stressful last couple of months. Yeah. So we were kind of de-stressing the games a little bit. Yeah. So that was what we played. So since we didn't, like I said, since we didn't really meet the criteria with anything except Wingspan. Yeah. I, I went ahead and picked some of my Which favorites. Which is probably one of your favorite games. This is one of the games we play a lot. Wingspan is one of my favorites. So, but I was like, we were, we've talked about that, you know, at, <laughs> at Nauseam. And, yeah. So... Um, so I went ahead and picked some of my favorites that I really enjoyed that were not one that were not Wingspan. All right, let's <laughs> tell our friends about them. So yes, um, so I'll go ahead and pull. There's actually three boxes for this one. Um, so the first box will actually show you what it is. This one is 
Spirit Island. Which we talked about we talked in about a previous it video. In a previous video. But... but you've been recently playing this with my dad, which is something that I don't keep track of. Of the games yes. that you play with my dad. I, pro I, I played this at least three times with your dad. It's almost four times. Yeah. Um, I probably will play it a little bit today. Yeah. Um, but then we also have both of the expansions for it. So this is one of the expansions called Nature Incarnate. And there is also Jagged Earth expansion. There's also a fourth expansion, which we don't have a box for, which, oh, we do have the box, but it's tiny. It's a tiny. It's Branch and Claw. Branch and Claw, which is a tiny, it's a small expansion. But mm -hmm. but I thought, I decided not to bring that, because that's probably one of my favorite cooperative games mm -hmm. of all time. And we... We have played a lot of it, just not recently as much. Mm -hmm. um, we played a lot of it really right after the fire. Oh, yeah, we did. It was one of the few games that survived the fire. Because and I played it a ton because it's a really great solo game. It is. Mm -hmm. So we played a lot of it for a long time. It was one of our only games for a long time. Mm -hmm. And now as we've gotten a bigger collection, we still play it from time to time. Mm -hmm. But um, I think we, we usually need to let that sit a little longer. Yeah, we usually will put it out and play until we've played through... Most of the spirits. Either all the spirits or we need to put it away to because people are coming over. Yes. So, um, <laughs> but I think you've really enjoyed playing it with my dad. Yes, I've been enjoying playing it a lot with your dad. So, um, the, I mean, the basic premise is that each person takes on the role of spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you're the spirits of the native people of an island. Of the native people of an island. And there's basically uh, invaders mm -hmm. who are coming to come to take over the island. Colonizers. And colonizers, settlers. basically. Mm -hmm. Settlers. And so you're trying to defend the... the uh, natives of the island and mm -hmm. the uh, keep to drive the invaders from off so they mm -hmm. no longer want to colonize it so so yeah um so it's it's been a lot of fun to play it again through dad um you know now are you playing different spirits each time are you doing any of the scenarios or adversaries we, we've been playing different spirits every time um i think he's finally gotten used to it again enough that we might add oh because he has i mean he hasn't played it as much as we have he hasn't played it as nearly as much <laughs> as we have so yeah. we might add some scenarios some easy scenarios or maybe an easy, easy adversary soon mm -hmm. but he's been kind of getting getting and flowing into it again because yeah. I, I always forget he hasn't played nearly as much as we have <laughs> we've played many many games of it so yeah. i think that was before you were tracking it so, um, so that's been one of my favorite games that I, I, I at least wanted to talk a little bit about because mm -hmm. I just do I do love the game. It's one of my favorite all time cooperative games. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't I won't say it's super easy to, to pick up. No, it, it, it's crunchy. It's crunchy. There's a lot of complexity to it, and so it's not a. There is an easier version that came out. There's a three player version that came out. It's at it's sold at Target. It's sold at Target. I don't know if it's a Target exclusive or I think it's a it's Target exclusive. Places. Yeah, my brother has that one, and we've played that with him a couple times. But it, it does simplify some of the stuff to make it easier to learn. Mm -hmm. um, it's also compatible with the main game. If you mm -hmm. like it enough, you can get Yeah, you game. can play those spirits with, with the main the, game. With so the game. so I, I really enjoyed the, the version, too, playing with your brother. So, mm -hmm. um, But the, the next game, I don't know. Do we talk about this one? I don't one? think we have. So this one is called Creature Comforts. Um, this is probably one of my favorite, especially fall time games. Mm -hmm. It's a very fallish game. Yeah. Um, which we have not talked a whole lot about. It's no. It's definitely crunchy enough that it's probably not super easy to pick up. Um, it says eight and up. It says eight and up. Um, I mean, there's there's a, a lot of things going on. Is the yeah. only thing, but it's not super complicated. It's just a lot of stuff to, to mm -hmm. keep in mind. Uh, so basically, you're 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 playing as a critter who's trying to prepare for the, the winter season, mm -hmm. and so you'll start in spring. Go through summer and fall before winter arrives, mm -hmm. and then that's the end of the game. Yeah, you're trying to gather resources and supplies to last you through the winter. And you're trying to deck out your home, so you're you're built, you know, getting a pantry to put in for storing food, making different kinds of food. Mm -hmm. knitting. There's also knitting, so there's socks and hats yes. and gloves. And there's like sl a little sledge you can get to go snowing. Then. There's also like quilt and books and candles and yeah. So yeah. you're just kind of seeing what kind of fun things you can put together for preparing for winter mm -hmm. is a little... And each of those things that you make is going to be worth points at the end of the game. Yeah, and so you're trying... And some of them work together, so they'll give you bonus points for having mm -hmm. sets of different ones that work together. Mm -hmm. And there's always a, a visitor every every season that mm -hmm. kind of comes and gives you some kind of a special event and some bonus options for things mm -hmm. you can it's a worker placement game so you have little yeah. pieces that you're putting out and it's also based on your dice rolls yes and there's there's two sets of dice mm -hmm. there's your personal dice that everybody has their own two dice but there's also a group set of dice that everybody uses is combined mm -hmm. with theirs and so so the actions that you take are actually sort of dictated by what the numbers are in your dice 
because each action has a, a, a number requirement that you're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. um, some of them require certain numbers of dice. Some of them have certain high or low numbers. And so you're looking at the dice. You don't. You, you roll, only know what two numbers are. You, you roll your dice first, and then once everybody's placed their people, then you roll the the the, the, the other four the dice. common set of dice. Yeah. And then you have to decide: Oh, can I actually meet all those goals, or do I have to skip out on some of them? Yeah. And if you skip, have to skip out, you get what's called a, a what a boo boo or something like that. They're called something else. We call them boo boos because they're tiny band aids. They're little tiny band aids, <laughs> and so it's like, oh, you didn't get to do what you want to do. Here's a, a something to help you in the future, which is a plus or minus on a future roll. So, yeah, and there's like there's four rounds of that, and then at the end, you just kind of count off the points based on all the stuff you've you've done, and it, it's just a fun, lighthearted game. Yeah. It's not overly, complica overly complicated, but it's just a lot to do, but yeah, I really like it a lot. It makes yeah. me feel very fallish. I, I feel like it's a fall game for me. <laughs> so so that was one of my favorite games. It's, it's pretty family-friendly, I mm -hmm. would say. Yeah, definitely. Um, this one, we've only just recently tried a new strategy to play, and I really have enjoyed this game. So this is called Freelancer's Guild. This was the game that you were gifted last year for your birthday. I was gifted last year. I really enjoyed it. It, it does a, a very long game. We played it twice last year, and then we just played it once with our friends at our game day last week. Yes. Um, and we've, we've tried a new approach that I think worked, was going to work better for playing, because it is a very long game, so... It's a fantasy adventure game. It's a fantasy adventure game. It's not... Not family friendly. It's not family friendly. It's There's definitely adult, a, themes. adult themed, um, but <laughs> it's a it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody starts with a a person who is a race in a class, and they're all mm -hmm. like wacky mm -hmm. and so there, there's also like mad lips involved yes so when you're creating your character you are going to choose some different words and then as your story goes on in the future you're kind of filling in the gaps with the words that you selected early on yeah so there's a lot of humor to it um mm -hmm. both from that and actually from the different storytelling because there's an app that goes with it mm -hmm. and yeah so it's almost like playing D and D, but it's being run by by the, the app, app. Mm -hmm. and so you're you're on this venture and they give you a main objective that from the beginning that you're trying to figure out how to get to essentially mm -hmm. and the story as the story evolves you'll learn how to get there and have mm -hmm. choices to make mm -hmm. um and there's like skill checks that you, you have to do mm -hmm. um you, which is based on what die you roll and as you get more experience and complete things you'll increase your stats which mm -hmm. gives you a bigger die essentially mm -hmm. Um, everybody has their strengths and weaknesses, their, mm -hmm. their characters. And so mm -hmm. some people will be able to get better than other people at certain skills. Mm -hmm. So you really have to work together to accomplish all the stuff and accomplish everybody's goals. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's been a lot of fun. It, it, like I mentioned, it does take a lot of time to play. I think it says that it takes three hours, but it took us five hours. It took us about five hours. I don't remember how long it took us to play through the first scenario because that was a year ago. But so... I mean, we decided to have it kind of set up ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, time. we asked our friends ahead of time if it was something they were interested in playing. Because something we talked about last time, but it was already late in the day. Yeah, and so usually usually I like to do it early, not only because you're more fresh, but really I want to have a time to play other games too. Yeah, and so they do have a feature where you can save it, but we found that it's kind of more fun if you can do it all in one go. Yes, I agree completely. So... Mm -hmm. Um, we have several games by this company. Um, they do a really great job with their app, the actors that they use, and some of the sounds and effects and stuff that they do is really entertaining. Yeah. So it, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, definitely not, like I said, not, not family friendly. No. But if you have a group of friends that are adults, you'll, you'll probably enjoy it. If you like it's a great way to get kind of the D&D feel without having to do a whole D&D campaign. Yeah. Or like put together a one-shot adventure yourself. Yeah. So... It's definitely, I, I highly recommend it if you're if you're looking for something D and D ish. Mm -hmm. and don't really have a, a DM because could, that does take a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So, so that was one of the games I selected. Um, and then the, the last one is the sequel to another one that I played through with your dad a lot, mm -hmm. which I don't think is one of your favorites. But this is uh, Frosthaven, and you can see I tried playing Gloomhaven. The box is huge, and it was not for me. It's not for her, but I really enjoyed it a lot, and your dad and I... Because what I like about freelancers is that it's mostly about the story. Yes. And there's just a tiny bit of... A tiny bit of fighting. fighting. It's, not, it's mostly skill checks. It's fighting. mostly skill checks, so... Um, whereas Frosthaven and Gloomhaven, you know, before it, is all about the, the tactical fighting. Yeah. There is story between, and, you know, it's it's been it's fun to hear the story, but... 
it's really about taking your character on a tactical map and fighting the mm -hmm. different creatures that are mm -hmm. out there. And uh, not really for you as much, mm -mm. but your dad and I really enjoyed Gloomhaven a lot. We played. I've played through Gloomhaven multiple, at least part of it, multiple times until your dad and I finally finished this last time. Mm. And, and you guys played double-handed, so you each controlled two we characters. We each controlled two characters, because the, the difficulty is the same whether you're doing two people, or two characters, or four. We wanted to see more of the characters mm -hmm. as we go through the game. So we each do two characters apiece. And it's a bit, this one's a lot of fun, too. They 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 improved some of the sticking points in the, the Gloomhaven that, weren't, that didn't quite flow as well. Mm. I, and they added some crafting elements to this where you're rebuilding, you're building this like village in this one. So mm. you get crafting things, you can build, you know, some additional walls, some different structures and upgrade those structures. And so they've added that. And in addition to having completely new characters that you get to do develop and they play completely differently than the ones from Gloomhaven. Mm. Um, I mean, there, and there's a magic system with different elements that, that you also can, can use for different characters. And it's, it's a lot of fun. So, um, if you're into to that kind of a game, I would highly recommend it. It plays really well. It, it also has an app that goes with it, but your dad and I have found that it, we don't usually use the app because it doesn't add enough to the game because it's mm -hmm. not as much about the story. Mm -hmm. And that just takes a lot of time mm -hmm. to, to listen to the app because mm -hmm. you can read it quicker yourself. This is one that you guys tend to play when my parents come here for the weekend because you can set it up. It takes a fair bit of setup and... There's a lot of components to the game, mm -hmm. so it, it as you, I sold the size of the box, it doesn't travel well. Yeah, <laughs> it's a super heavy game to pick up and carry around places. Yeah, yeah. So we usually leave it here now. And I used to try to take Loomhaven to his house and then mm -hmm. rag, um, and it's just it's usually too unwieldy to try mm -hmm. to because usually you know it takes a number of hours to play too. Mm -hmm. And we usually want to play other games with you, and so we usually don't have time to play if we're traveling and going visiting. So. Which is why you've moved to playing Spirit Island. Which, yeah, we, we, we're playing the Pathfinder card game, which I know mm -hmm. I've talked about. Oh, before. yeah, you've played that a ton. We played, you've played several of those? We've played several of those, and we're at a point where we needed a change of pace because we played that game so many times. We, we had tried one that I think was it you had got me or my mom had got me, the Lord um, of the Rings one. The, I think my dad got it was you and, and there's an app that goes to that one as well the handles the campaign but we we're probably going to give it one more try we've tried it twice now and it doesn't the bat the combat doesn't seem very balanced mm -hmm. in the game mm -hmm. which is unfortunate because the story was fun but we've tried a new set of characters and tried a different approach and end up having basically the same results as the previous mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. so we were doing that one and then we, we switched to um of Spirit Island, but this one we play when he comes over. Mm -hmm. uh, when we have time, especially when they come over for the weekend, mm -hmm. we'll usually just we'll usually get at least a session in. Mm -hmm. So, those were some of my favorite games um, that I play a lot of outside of Wingspan because <laughs> Wingspan is still towards the top. But. Yeah. So those were, those were just the games that I had picked this month. There's, I'm sure next month we'll have more. Yeah, I have no idea what we're going to play this month. We never really know. I uh, I can guarantee you, <laughs> Wingspan will be in there somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> so, but that, I think that's it for our game section. Yeah. So we hope you enjoy learning about some of my favorite games. Um, if you have any more questions about them, I'd certainly be happy to to show you. I, I don't know that we'll set up Frosthaven to take pictures of no. it. No. But if, <laughs> if we do take pictures in the future when your dad and your dad comes over, I can probably insert those at some future date. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you stay with us this long and... Uh, enjoyed us when you're new please do subscribe and hit the uh, like button and all those things and if you're still with us and if, if or a returning subscriber we're, we're glad you stayed with us and are part of our community because this has been such a rewarding experience mm -hmm. um we hope you have a wonderful uh rest of the weekend and mm -hmm. or whenever you're watching this and a wonderful month of october this is my favorite time of year so i hope you're enjoying this wonderful fall weather wherever you are yeah or if you're in the south we hope you're enjoying the coming of spring that's right. If you're in the South, come in the coming of spring because it's yeah. a different season. Yeah. Uh, and we will be back in about a month. Yeah. So uh, take care, everybody, and we will see you hopefully soon. Yep. Yeah. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.